There we go. Recorder's on. Again, welcome to Tuesday night, everybody. How are you? Seems like we were just here just a little while ago. We could talk about bread makers here. I, Malcolm's got one. Uh, C, could not find a link or email about tonight. Hmm, okay. That could be why it's a short, short crowd here. I'll check that out. Thank you very much, C. I appreciate it. Bry Byron, no email either. Okay. Thank you very much. So it's definitely going to be a short night here and probably, uh, probably just a lot of members here. So hello, David. Other people may have problems getting in. Uh, I was locked out. Well, okay. Well, that's all right. Uh, yes, PH7. Yes, absolutely. I'll be recording this, absolutely. Uh, Mitch, I'll see what I can do about that, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Dan. Yeah, you know, we have too many rooms, and I don't know what to do, so. But you are very correct. Thank you very much, Dan, for, for passing that along to everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, good idea, Byron. Thanks. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight was 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 taking profits. Um, you know, it seems like one of the one of the major questions that's always asked uh, of me, anyway is stops and and uh while i think stops are extremely important i i mean like top of the list well so are so are profits and i think it's important for for somebody to to um, understand how to take profits and i and i don't i and i think i i know for me personally um in the past, you know, what it was all about was, hey, you have a chart setting up, where's the target? You know, where is the target? And, um, okay, so we put a target up there, um, you, me, everybody else, wherever, we just put a, some target up there. Well, then what are we going to do about that? What are we going to do? And it seems like, seems like I, I, I field a lot of questions via email and and uh, mostly email, and I get some YouTube, you know, questions on this, but mostly email on this type of thing. Um, it's like, what? Oh, okay, that's the target, but then somebody might somebody might say, well, the price never made it to the target, and it just starts back down. So, so we get a little bit lost. Well, what do we do? You know, what do you do? Uh, maybe the, you know, maybe price went up like this right here, maybe up, 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 and then what do you do? Well, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed over the past, well, I'd say while, I guess, I've gotten sort of uh, not so much, well, I try to, I've, I've been trying to get away from targets because targets, what does that mean? And and I, I again I find so many traders, they they look at this and they hear about a target up here, and they lose track of why they're why they're trading, um, and uh, you know it, it's I I think for a lot of traders it, honestly and I and I'm not saying anybody here okay I'm really really not, uh, but I think a lot of traders what it's about is is something like this right here. Uh, oh, doggone it. There we go. Try that one. Try it red now. Uh, tell me where to buy it and tell me where to sell it. And you can't do that. You, you can't do that. As I can't tell you that, nobody can tell you that. You as a trader, you've, gotta, you've got to set up your plan up and make that happen. But what happens if the chart never moves up there? Let me, let me show you in a good example. Today. Today... I sent an alert out and said that I was going to take half my blink 
trade off the table at about 30 bucks. Okay. Well, I didn't. I mean, look at the high. The high came within 25 cents of hitting that $30 mark. And I didn't take it when it was up there. Now, in, in my case, I can honestly tell you, I got kind of busy, sidetracked, and did a few other things. Now, I ended up closing half the trade, but it was actually down further than where it closed. It was actually down just, just a smidgen's closer. It actually raised up pretty shortly after I took half the trade. So, you know, what, what do you do? Do you buy something? Do you wait for it just simply to to move to the upside or, you know, to some magical line, somewhere where we put some magical line? Or do we know what we want? And this is something different. This is something that it's just been over the past couple years that we've been talking about it because I've never... I've never really done it quite like this. Now, close to it, but I never connected the dots and uh, made it into a, well, a, a system, if we will, okay? If we can, anyway. Um, I've always been a profit taker. I've always been somebody that um, you buy a stock and you take profit on the way up. But what I didn't know up until a couple years ago uh, is how to put that together. And, I, and man, I've been doing this for going on 34 years now. And you learn things all the time. You learn things not only about a chart, but you learn things about yourself. And you, you just, every, every, every day, it seems like it's a learning, uh, a learning, it's like you're taking a course every single day. Every, every day I sit down on this computer, it seems like I'm taking a, a class, a course or something. And uh, this is one of the things that I think has been so uh, wonderful. And I can honestly tell by uh, comments, say, in YouTube, comments, uh, Facebook comments, uh, email comments here in the room, that other folks that have adop adopted uh, a similar, similar practice, that their success has just gone crazy. Uh, compared to, okay? And uh, if somebody wasn't making money, if at the end of the month, if you made $0, and if you made $10 by following some good steps to taking profits, then that's fantastic. That's, you know, I mean, a huge step in the right direction. So I just want, you know, I would like everyone just to think about, think about taking those profits we talk all the time about a chart pattern. We talk all the time about a stop. But when it does come to profits, I, I do blow over that uh, a little bit. Uh, I don't spend nearly as much time on it. And what I will typically do, you guys, like I say, most people in here are members. You guys all know, um, is I'm looking to take profits to the upside as, as we move up like this. And... And here's something that I think might be surprising, not to the members that are here, but maybe to people that have not been here, if there's anyone here. What might be surprising is, honestly, I'm happy with a $20 bill. I don't have to make thousands of dollars. I'm happy with uh, 10%. Okay, I don't have to make 100%. And the money just adds up. So I think I, what, what, something that's very important is not only taking those profits, but, but making sure that you can see a, a path to those profits. It's, it's like this. Okay. Understanding a chart pattern, for instance, this is a J-hook setting up. Now, we all know that it's not an official J-hook till it breaks out right here. That's not, uh, you know, until it breaks out, it's not an official J-hook. But we can see how the chart pattern is working. So 
if I could buy this in this area, do I have to have it to break out to make money? Do, do I have to be, do I have to have it up here? Or could I make money just in this area right here? If I bought it down here, what am I up here on Blink? Currently up 18.65%. So is that enough money? Or do we have to make it go higher? Would it be enough money if it just came and challenged this top up here? And this is something that I think that every trader probably needs to take a hard look at themselves. Um, it, it, themselves and their trading in, well, how much money do you want? Um, no one ever gives me this answer anymore because I pretty much put it into the question. Uh, but if I was to ask somebody, well, how much money do you want to make in trading? And then there's no period there. And I immediately say, and as much as you can is not an answer. Well, that throws them completely off base because that's what they were going to say. you know. Um, but if you were to sit down and if you were to honestly figure out how much money you want to make, and by the way, somebody that's got a $4,000 account, if you say you want to make $100,000 this year, well, let me, <laughs> let me tell you, don't do that. <laughs> you know, we have to be realistic with our numbers. We really do. Um, so once you get to a realistic number, then you can kind of figure out, well, how much money you have to have. And, um, you, 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 when you look at charts, you can, you can see that, okay, the path could be to that little top right here. The path can be to test this top. That's what I think. I don't think this one's going to matter. Or the path could be higher, if that's what you think. When, when um, back in the early days, early days and say even mid days, mid, mid, mid time, um, and I think everybody might be might have had this happen to them, where you're in a position. Let's paint this green. You're in a position. It's green. It's green. It's green. It's green. You you are like, wow, this is fantastic. Hey, anybody can do this, right? And then all of a sudden, it has a bad day. Well, you don't really think anything about it because man, this thing's going to heaven. This this is this, this is great. As another bad day. Yeah, well, that's all right. You know, that's all right. And before you know it, it comes back like this. And now you finally get to a point where, yeah, all right, you, you go ahead and sell it. Uh, but what happens, you sell it where you're going to make all of $10. Okay, I'm just using small money. All right. So 10 bucks. When you could have sold it for how much? If each one of these arrows was, say, $10, you could have sold it for, well, there's $10, $20, $30, $40, all right, okay? And now you can put your zeros, your commas, wherever you want to put them. Uh, so here's a chance where you could have sold it $40, but because it's going to heaven, right, it comes right back down and you end up only taking 10 And what happens is you're excited about that. Because you made 10 bucks, okay? You were smart enough that you didn't let it go to zero or negative numbers. You were that smart. But one of the problems you're not realizing here is how many days did it take you to do that? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, right? That's eight days you've wasted, in my opinion. Wasted absolutely wasted. Or maybe just four days to the downside. Maybe I should do that. Maybe four days. You know, let's change this to, let's change this to four. There we go. Four days wasted. Now, just think about this. If this was a couple of weeks, you just wasted, you could have wasted two weeks in here if you held it for two weeks. Sorry, writing with a mouse is hard. Two weeks. So just think about that. 
when we're taking profits or when we're not taking profits. Now, one of the problems is when we get up here, greed sets in. And greed, I, I know... I, I know as traders, as as just people in general, okay, you, you've got to have a little bit of greed. And there's nothing wrong with greed. That's why we go to work. That's why we, that, that, that you know, if we didn't have greed as human beings, we would be, we would be in the food stamp line and we would be satisfied with whatever we get with food stamps. But we don't want to do that. Every now and then, we want to go out and get served in a restaurant, cloth napkin. We want steak. Every now and then, we want to treat ourselves to something. So we work. It, we, we all have a certain amount of greed. And that's okay. And it's okay to have a certain amount of greed in stock trading, too. But it's, it's just funny. Stock trading will bring out the greed in people like no one's business. So does gambling. Stock trading and gambling is razor's edge between the two. An absolute razor's edge. Um, the only way I can justify trading over gambling for myself is I get to pick where I'm stopped out. I get to pick the trades I want. I get to pick the profit targets. I get to choose whether I'm going to trade today. If I didn't have rules like that, if I didn't say I'm only going to trade a chart that's trending, if I didn't have those rules, there would be nothing between stock trading and gambling. And gambling will bring out the, the worst in everybody. In fact, that's what Vegas, Reno, all those places, that's what they count on. I think, I, I'm, you know, I don't know anyone that owns a casino or anything. But if I owned a casino, I think what I would do is every person that came in, I would, I, if, if, if any possible way, I would guarantee them to be a winner the first hour. Win what you want. Knock yourself dead. Could be a hundred dollars, thousand, could be a million dollars. I don't care. Everybody wins the first hour. Because now every, what they're going to do is greed is going to kick in and they're going to win all that money. And then they're going to start losing. That's the way the system is set up. They're going to start losing. But that can't be possible because I've done such a good job. It, it, that I'm One more hand. Please, honey. Let me put another quarter in the machine. Let me pick, let's, let's go with red this time. Spin that wheel. Let's, let's put something on black this time. And you see how that works out? So, to me, the key to trading is taking profits on the way up. Now, unfortunately, there's some, there's some rules that has to be made ahead of time. The chart cannot go up unless it's a good quality chart. So it's important when you're looking at charts to trade good charts. So what is a good chart? Trending would be one. Um, charts that makes a known chart pattern. Now this is me talking, okay? So, so I'm, I'm all about chart patterns. Now maybe there's other things out there too, okay? I just, I, this is just me talking and I'm all about chart patterns. I'm all about the candlesticks, which equates to price action, um, I'm all about that. So when I see a chart like this, I'm willing to take that risk, especially when there's plenty money that leads us up into the resistance. So let's say this chart here only had 2% up there. Would I take that trade? Absolutely not. But what if it broke out? Man, it could run 10%. That doesn't matter. That's not a good trade for me. 
a good trade for me is a trade where it can move just a little bit and make a lot of money. That's one reason I like options so much. Uh, because it only has to move a little bit and you make a lot of money. But you have to be able to look at these charts and you have to be able to, f to be comfortable with saying, look, I've got a, 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 um, a, a good conviction that this charge, chart is going to go up. Now, I want to stop right there for a second. We're, we're, what, 20 minutes in. Probably should have said this beforehand. Um, please don't answer. We'll, I'm going to try to come up, maybe answer if there's any questions up there. I see there's some chat. But please don't answer. That will just ruin the whole chat stream here. Um, how many people thinks, and I'll just use me as an example, and we'll use the Road to Wealth account. How many people think that I have 100% winners. Please don't answer that. Let me answer that for you, okay? Not no, but hell no. I mean, hell, yes, I have win losers. I, do, I don't do 100% win winners. Absolutely, I have losers. And sometimes I have two, three, four, five losers in a row. Sometimes, sometimes I'll go a couple days and not actually close anything out and make money. And in some cases close nothing but losing traces out, trades out, okay? So, um, there's no way I have complete winners. There's no way I can guarantee that this trade is actually going to work out. We work on probabilities. And if we work on probabilities, then you better be darn sure your probabilities, you, the conditions you're putting together are good, and it's just through experience, it's through time, it's through trial and error, it's through a lot of pain, I've discovered that, one, stay with a chart. Or, I'm sorry, stay with a trend. So let's do this. Stay with a trend, and then what we're looking for, let's try it this way today with a pen, and let's make it pink. There we go. Oops, that's not a pen. Pen. There we go. Pink. There we go. Stay with the trend and just follow the trend and you're looking for, for little dips. Now, I purposely didn't go down to that trend. And we'll make this one go down. Down. We'll make that one go all the way down. There we go. So, we want to stay with the trend and I'm not... I'm not... Um, I don't always wait for a chart to come down to a trend line. I don't do that. And the reason I don't do that is I focus more on chart patterns. And with chart patterns, you get J hooks like that, and they don't always come down to the trend line. Now, don't think I don't use a trend line. I do, absolutely. I look at this chart and I want to see that that chart is trending. I use three major moving averages. I use the three exponential, the seven, the T line, the eight exponential, and the 17 exponential. Those have to be trending up. When those are trending up, then the price action, not every time, but the price action is in the right area there. So I may see charts that dip down just slightly, not all the way to the trend line. I absolutely may take those. And then there's some that do come right down to a trend line, might take those as well. So it's just, we want that trend, and then we want the price action above that trend to be putting in the chart pattern. So what does all this have to do with taking profits? You can't just blindly buy a chart, put in a stop, and think it's going to make some profits. It takes a little work, and the work is being able to recognize those good charts. When you put all that together, then you can start making those profits because the probabilities start, your probabilities start rising up. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I've been talking for 25 minutes here. Let me try to answer some questions. Let's see if there's anything. Um, 
let's see here. I'm going to start, let's see, with uh, uh, Malcolm. Actually, Reno was founded uh, and continued to thrive on donor party syndrome. People come here, get stuck, and die. <laughs> yeah. um, you have to have iron linen napkins. <laughs> Uh, Jake, a uh, great movie I saw over the weekend called Molly's Game. That is a pretty good movie. I think I've seen that. Yeah, about that, uh, yeah, that, that girl that uh, uh, ran a casino or something. I think I have seen that. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to have to watch that again, Jake. Thanks. Uh, let's see, Bobby. I get more attention from my family these days. Uh, I give them one roll of toilet paper every Sunday. <laughs> <coughs> Now that's funny, Bobby. That's funny. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Jake, yeah, let's see, if they come down to your T-line. Okay, so let's come back over here with Jake. <laughs> um, if, they, if price comes down to your T-line, is that like uh, the coming to the trend? Uh, Jake, it is. I use the trend line, the T-line. And by the, by the way, when, when the T-line was created, it was... It was, it was used as, and it still is, used as a trend line and or a trigger line, okay? So the trigger, the way you would, let's talk about the trigger part of it first. So the trigger of it would be, we rally up, we come back, that would be the trigger line. Or maybe price is below it and it comes above, that maybe would be the trigger line. But Okay, there's the trigger part of it, but let's talk about the trend part of it. One of the things uh, when we see like this, this is called a T-line run, all right? And let's start back here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> let's start back here. So here's price underneath the T-line, and it rallies above the T-line, when you get multiple days, and I've never put a number on it, okay? I've never put any kind of number, how many days. Uh, but I would say two, three days. That could be the start of a T-line run. A T-line run is when price never closes below the T-line. And it never closed below, starting about here. Never closed below. Nope, that did not close below. Close all up, right? That's called a T-line run. So why can't that be your trend line? And that's exactly what I use it for. I probably don't use it much as a trigger line these days. I use it more as a, uh, uh, a T-line run, a trend line here. So when I see price rallying up and pulling back, I start watching that area around that T-line. This is why the 3-H trap is so doggone powerful. It really is. All we've done is we've trapped it in this area. We could call that a trigger if you want. You can call it the pocket if you want, you know, whatever. But the T-line the is absolutely a trend line. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy something and long as it stays above the T-line, I'm going to stay in it. That doesn't mean that at all. Because that gets, that gets, that is absolutely ridiculous the higher price goes and the faster price goes up. The higher and the faster price goes up, the T-line can't keep up. Before you know it, the T-line is like this. Oh, I'll see, black, I guess. T-line is like this. Well, you wouldn't want to hold this until it came back below the T-line, okay? So, to your question, um, absolutely yes, price coming back into the T-line. And that's just what happened here. Came right back into the T-line. Now, from this point, we're going to look at that price action and that chart pattern to help us decide if this is going to be a chart to buy. Once we get all this in place, then we can start looking at, at taking those profits as price moves up. But unless you have this, you don't get to come up here and draw little green bubbles where you're going to, you know, dollar signs. I wish these were dollar signs, but they, they don't have it in the toolbox here. 
But you don't get to draw these little, little green bubbles until you get all this in place. Then you can start doing something like that. Thanks, Jake. Hey, Malcolm, do you have a guideline for taking profits a dollar percentage? Yeah, I do. And, you know, I, we'll see here. Yeah, I do. And mine is based... My, mine is based on the fact that I want to double my account at bare minimum. At absolute bare minimum, I want to double my account in 12 months. That's the goal I've set up for myself. And it doesn't matter how much money you start with. And I, let, me, let, me, let me temper that just a little bit. If somebody has a, a quarter of a million dollar account, um, it's going to be hard for you to double it. But if somebody has a, say, a $30,000 account, I think it's, a, it's I think with, with hard work and, and the right rules and sticking with your rules, I think you have a fairly good, above 50% uh, chance of doubling your money. If you've been doing this a while and you have a little experience and you, 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 you're, you, you seriously follow those rules, then I think you have a, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to use the words very high probability of doubling your money, but your chances are, are just so much better. Because just because maybe I can do it or maybe Malcolm can do it or Jake can do it or Bobby can do it, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to do it, all right? Every trader is a little bit different. So um, what I've done, I, I've said my bare minimum is to double my account. So I take my, the amount of money I have, and I divide that by 243 days, and I come up with how much money I have to make a day. So if I have to make, uh, for instance, right now, if I've got to make $85 a day, I'm going to have to get my calculator out here for a second. Now, that doesn't mean that I make $85 every single day, all right? However, what it does mean is that I work my butt off to make $425 a week because I know it's, un, it, it's maybe unrealistic to think that I'm going to profit Put in my pocket, put in my pocket $85 a day. I know that that's unrealistic to say that. But over a week's time, this becomes more realistic. And then $85 times, say, 20 days, that would be a month. It's more realistic to think that you could put $1,700 a month in your pocket. That's a lot easier to do that than it is to do this. I know that sounds crazy, but it is. Because some days you're going to have losing days, but other days you're, you're going to mop up the floor. You, you just, just mop it up. So what I do for profits, when you see me, you know, lately I've been doing this, uh, if you watch the videos, as price moves up, I'll take profits into strength. I'll do something like that. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking some of this some of this money right here, some of this money, I'm putting it in my pocket. Because no matter what, at the end of the month, I want to profit 1700 bucks. At the end of a week, I want to profit eight four $425. I'll give up the daily business because some days you just can't win. Some days you can't win. So the way I do it, it doesn't matter if this is a target. It does not matter if this target is up there. To me, it's all about meeting my goal. That's all it is. And it's not about, you know, it's not about, well, why, why don't you make a goal of tripling your money? Tripling your money. Why don't you do that? Because... I might not be able to do that. And I think I can double it relatively easy. Um, but what I have found is that I generally have, oh, anywhere from, say, six to ten positions on. 
Well, what'll happen, I probably should have, well, let's leave them all green, I guess. What'll happen is I'll make money on this one, this one. I might not make money there. I'll make money here, might not make it here, might not make it here, and I'll make it here. Even with these losses or even money, which mostly losses, I guess. Here, let's do this. Even with, with those possible losses there, the money made, I'm doing well over $85 a day to the point where it's not doubling, but it is in fact tripling or quadrupling. So to me, it's not about, you know, waiting for the price to get to here or somebody that puts their pants on just like you do says this stock is going to go to $29 up here, good for them. I'm just not willing, let's see here, arrow right here in green, there we go. I'm not willing to have it move up, to have it move down because the reality is it's not going to go from here straight to there. And I know from experience that I don't do well when this happens. I do extremely well when this happens. So that's all I look for. And all I need is this kind of money right there. That's it. Uh, thanks, Malcolm. Let's see. So on Blink, could, could the close above the T-line three candles back and the previous down candle be considered good risk? Whew, I'm going to have to read that again. So on Blink, could the close above the T-line three candles back one, two, three, make sure we're correct there, three candles back on the previous downtrend, uh, could that be considered low risk buy? Um, well, let, let, you, you know, the problem, the problem we have here, Jake, what is low risk? See, that's the problem. What is low risk? What, what is low risk? I don't know. Um, you know, it is, is, it, um, is leaving mayonnaise out on your counter all day long and then making a sandwich in the, in, at night is, is that, is that, uh, do you consider that low risk of getting sick? <laughs> I, I don't know where I come up with this stuff sometimes. Maybe because I had a, a, a turkey sandwich tonight. <laughs> yeah, so so, so we, we really have to ask ourselves, what is low risk? So as I look at this chart, why would you necessarily want to buy it here? I, and I'm not saying that's not bad risk. But I look at this chart, and here we stopped here. We rallied up. We stopped there. We popped up, but yet, but yet we closed underneath it. Does that line, under that line, I'm going to say that would, be, that would be bad risk. I don't think that's good risk because we need to break out over that line. So what I would like you to do is not focus so much on the T line. You can certainly use it, but also consider that price action right there. So do you see what I'm looking at here? We, we have a, well, we should actually go here. We stopped, we stopped, we stopped, we stopped, we stopped, crushed it to the downside, stopped, couldn't get through. That red line just might be kind of an important line because of that. So I don't think that is a good risk down here. I do not think. Now, in hindsight, Everybody should have bought it at this low here, but we don't get to make that hindsight choice when we're buying at the time. So I would have to say this was not a good risk down here. Okay, does that help? Let's see, at what point is an account too large to double? I, Jake, again, I don't know. I could not tell you that. I can tell you this from experience. The larger the account, the harder it is to grow. Somebody with a smaller account can grow their account faster than somebody with a big account. 
to start with, can you imagine managing a million dollar account? Can you imagine managing a half a million dollar account? Can you just imagine the pressure on you for that? Managing a $250,000 account. The pressure is, is insane. I don't care how down and out you are. I don't care how, and you know, I'm trying to make a point here. I don't care how down and out you are. I don't care how broke you are. I don't care how poor you are. I don't, I don't care. Anybody that has two ears and anything between them can go out and make four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. Just hard work. But not everybody can put together two hundred and fifty thousand bucks. So I I can't tell you what that number is. That's sort of personal between you and you, actually. You know, at, at what point do you do you do you does does it overwhelm you the pressure? And and uh uh, so honestly, I couldn't tell you what that number would be. I cannot tell you that because I, I just don't know. And let's see, I guess a $250,000 account, again, I, I think talked about that. You'd need a high volume of options to play that game. Well, it all depends on how many contracts you buy. It, it would all depend how many contracts. The more contracts you buy, the the more volume you need in it. You need it to be an active, uh, an active ticker. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Barry, interesting how Blink uh, top tick the August 17 high in November. Um, you, you know, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to answer, I'm going to talk about what Barry is saying there. Um, so what did you say here? There we go. Um, so what'd you say? 2000, what, 17 over here? Yeah. You know, that is, that is very common for that to happen, Barry. I, I mean, that is, that is one of those things that is ridiculously common. Um, you know, and, and I'm not going to look at pennies or even nickels. Let's just get close to the, let's just get close to the pen here. So we have a top here, we have a top here, we have a top here. Price, price always likes to return to an active area. It always does. doesn't matter whether the area is down low or the area is down high or it's somewhere in the middle. Price always likes to return to those levels. Now, nowhere in there is time. It could be two days, it could be two years, it could be 20 years. But price always likes to go back to those active areas. And that right there, that is not surprising at all. And it's not surprising that it came up to it and then pulled back. That is something that is extremely common. This is why when we look at a chart, we go back and look at time and if we see where this chart has, has uh, which I don't much care about this high. This high doesn't bother me. What bothers me more are the highs to the left. And when we see, and I'm just going to put one right here and one right here, okay? When we see that, that tells me that that is a, a impo an important level. And the likelihood is that... The first time we get back up to it, we're going to see a pullback. Does not guarantee the pullback is going to be this far or this shallow. It just means there's going to be some consolidation almost every time. Uh, this is why as price moves up and say price is sitting here, or I'll, I'll even use this stock except the problem with this one, there's an excellent percentage between here and here. That's why I like this trade right now. There's, there's plenty money to be made. But this is why we typically don't look at a chart and say, well, I'm going to buy it here. Why buy it here so close to resistance? How about let's wait until it breaks out, proves itself. And when that happens... It is, it, it's an insanely amount of times um, 
a very good high probability money making where price will break through, will test, will give us another opportunity to buy and now we can start doing that again. And let this area go. Don't worry about making money here. So it's very common to see that. That's really what I wanted to say in there, okay? Let's see, Malcolm, my, tra my trading took a huge pivot when I started applying percent time uh, rules. Uh, take off a third between 20, 10 and 20% gain. Now, I want to stop right there for a second, all right? So what Malcolm has done is he, is, he has put, like he says, time and percent together. Well, what happens if every trade that Malcolm traded, you know, what if he woke up tomorrow and he said, okay, I have a new plan. Here's my plan. I'm going to take profits off at 10 and 20 percent. That was bad, wasn't it? There we go. 10 and 20 percent. Okay, up front, that sounds fantastic. It really does. Because he's taking some profits off. That means, ideally, he'll take more profits off up higher. That is a fantastic plan, except there's a big flaw in this plan. Malcolm could not do that if he didn't pick good quality charts. So, Malcolm, and, and I got to tell you this, Mal, Mal, Malcolm, I'm going to talk about you just a little bit. Malcolm shares a few things with me on the private side. And I'm telling you, Malcolm's a good trader. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how good. I'll let Malcolm do that when he's ready, when he's ready. But Malcolm is a good trader. So, so like I said, if, if, he was, if somebody was to say, well, I'm going to do that, Malcolm, that makes sense. Thanks, Malcolm. You really clean things up for me. The problem is, if you can't put together a good trade, you're never going to get the opportunity to do that. What Malcolm does is he puts together good trades. And that is what gives him the opportunity to take 10% off or 20% or 30 or 40. So, it's all about that setting it up so you can take that opportunity. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, if I have a if I have a position open for seven days or more, it better be paying me uh, with twenty percent. Now again, that is that is impressive, folks, and and I believe Malcolm. Okay, because I, well, I just believe him. All right, that's impressive. That's impressive to say. I'm going to buy XYZ and I'm willing to hold it seven days. And if it hasn't made me at least 20%, then I don't want it. That, that's ballsy. That's ballsy to do that. That's ballsy to say that. But you can say that when, when, when your, your, your foundation is strong. When you have solid rules, when you have... Um, uh, a good understanding of price action, a good understanding of chart patterns, and it's just the chart patterns you like. I, Mal, you know, Malcolm doesn't know every chart pattern out there. Good Lord, I don't know everyone. No one knows every chart pattern out there. Malcolm has a few chart patterns that he likes, and that's what he does. And that's what makes him so ballsy to say, seven days, you better be making me some money or I'm going to trash you. But it all comes from the foundation. Without the foundation, you just don't get the opportunity. And neither would he if he didn't have that foundation in there. Thanks again, Malcolm. Okay, Barry, sounds like a good strategy. Uh, I like using uh, those trailing stops. Yeah, trailing stops. Now, see, that's not something I use. I have nothing against them. Um... I've just chosen to be uh, quicker at taking profits. Um, I may, uh, well, uh, let's do it this way. Uh, blue's positive, by the way. Whoops, that's not blue. There we go. I may hit and run kind of guy. How's that? How's that for cleverness, right? I'm a hit and run. I'm not a... I'm not a, well, I'm going to put a stop under there. 
it's going to go higher and then I'm going to put another stop. That's just not my style. Does not mean that's wrong or doesn't mean it's right. It, it just, it just me, just me. Let's see, Bobby. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Malcolm. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, I've also adopted the buy box. Uh, I buy in the box and don't worry about being right. You know, <laughs> that's, that's funny how Malcolm says that because that's kind of the way I am. I try not to say that though. Um, that's sort of, um, that's sort of loosey goosey, but it's true. When, when you have a good foundation, you know, we're talking about blink here. Uh, what are we going to do tomorrow? Uh, if, if, uh, if blink, um, does this, <laughs> we're in a whole lot of trouble, aren't we? <laughs> and I'm, I'm not talking about blink. I'm just talking about the chart. Okay. <laughs> but it, when you, when you set your trade up, when you, when you set your trade up, if you have that foundation right in here, um, who was it that asked somebody, Jake, maybe Jake, you know, is would this be a low risk buy down here? See, I think that would be a horrible buy down there. I truly do. But then again, I guess I would have lost out of a little bit of money here. Uh, actually, lost out of a lot of money because I didn't buy it till today. So, um, or did I buy it yesterday? I guess I bought it yesterday. Maybe that's what it was. Um, but anyway, I would have lost out of money. But if you if you are buying if you are looking at a chart that has a strong foundation and you weren't playing with stuff like that right there underneath that red line is fire above that red line is well that's pie and if you did that and you put that buy box in there and you did just what I did here now that's an awful lot of risk if you bought it up higher up here okay but if you kept your risk in that oh say under five, six percent. And if you had a good foundation and if the market was in your favor, okay, the market is in your favor, then your probabilities are of this working out are pretty darn good. Now, when I say working out, for me, that's working out, okay? It meeting my goals. That's to me, my trade is traded. I'm done. I'm happy. That chart worked out. So buying in that buy box, you buy it there, you set your stop, you leave it alone till you make your money. If it stops you out, move on. Let it go. So I get what Malcolm is saying with just just you know put it in there and don't really worry about it. I get that. <laughs> Don't worry about being right. <laughs> you don't. You don't have to. Um, Mal Gwyn doesn't feel pressure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm up to that pressure. I just need to get there. There you go. Yeah, you know, everybody, everyone's account is a little bit different. Everyone trades with a different account size. Uh, Jake, I like your sp your specific explanation for how you got that level for the red line. And yeah, we'll do that in the room. I'll do that every single night, um, you know, for the video that night. I'll go through that again tomorrow night, Jake, definitely. Um, I've been having trouble understanding where you get your lines. Make sure, Jake, tomorrow, uh, about an hour before the close, we'll start. We'll start doing this, okay? And I'll show you exactly how I get that stop in there and we'll work on those upper lines too for profit taking or where you see the chart going. Uh, hi, Mitch. I know, you, I know you can't take every trade, but I see you draw a lot of buy boxes and never take the trade when it moves into the buy boxes. Again, I can't take every trade. And when I when it's time to buy, I have to reevaluate the trade. I have to make a complete reevaluation of it. Also, if there's another trade over there doing better, I might choose to take that trade. So it's all about evaluating the trade is what it is. All about evaluating the trade. 
And I also want to say that, say, well, uh, Blink, that was on Mike, uh, Blink, 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 wasn't it? Or maybe that was on the other, other night, other night's watch list, I guess, last night's or night before. But say one of these uh, right in here, let's use DKNG, because I bought DKNG right at the close today. So I chose D DKNG because what it was doing. Now, what if DKNG did not put in this bullish engulf today? What if it just sort of danced around like this? Like it, let me just make those smaller. There we go. What if it just danced around right here for more days? Well, I wouldn't take that buy till I felt there was a uh, a feeling come over me, and I don't know how to explain that. I really don't. Um, but let's take DKNG, a bullish engulf with extra volume. That that is a feeling that came over me. <laughs> All right. Um, here is, you see that line right here? See where, the, where that topped out, that candle topped out? See right through there? See all those touches? We have a bullish engulf, a good one too, with extra volume that broke out over that 4970, that level, that kind of a nasty little line right there. So I had that loving feeling. It, it, it's something just it blew my way and said, okay, I'm going to take this trade over other trades. So you, you're right. I, 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 don't take, I don't take all the trades. One, I couldn't possibly do that. And two, I might take the trade, but it might be a week later. So take tonight's tonight's trade ideas for tomorrow. These, you know, trade ideas is probably a very bad word to use, bad phrase, probably poorly, a poor phrase. Because really all I'm doing is adding these to the watch list. And then from the watch list, I evaluate every chart I look at. So every time I look at a chart from the watch list that's alerted, I evaluate what I want to do with it. Many times, the charts run away. Many times, maybe let's say I don't. Let's say today I didn't buy uh, DraftKings here. There we go. I didn't buy that, and maybe I said, "Okay, this might be a good trade idea," which I did say in tonight's video. Hey, if it pulls back here, this just might be a good trade, and I might add to this. But what if tomorrow it just gaps up and goes? I lost my chance to add to it. And if I didn't own it, I lost my chance to buy it. Until what? Until it sets up again. So what would it have to do? Maybe something like this right here. When it does something like this, I then I get another chance. So let's do this. Let's just take a look at that, right? Let's take a look at that. There it is right there. So you're right. I don't. I can't possibly take every one. Well, I think I answered all that. Is it, did that help a little bit? And let's see. I didn't even read the last part. What is ultimately uh, is the, the the deciding decision to buy? Um, that loving feeling, I guess. And on this one, I got that loving feeling from the higher volume, the bullish engulf, and the fact we broke out of that blue line there, and also the fact that we're 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 doing this i mean that to me is just and it's just starting that right there is a work of beauty if you ask me and it ended up very nice today so, and it's so it's all about looking at some of those rules um a buy signal and this is man I, i'm going to talk about this I know there's an awful lot of folks here that 
buy on down candles, okay? And I want to tell you, it makes me cringe every time. I, I, I think that is wrong, but that's just me, okay? That's my trading, my trading. But I do. I think it's horribly wrong because all you're trying to do is catch a bottom. I know, and that I know for a fact, okay? No one can, you can't, you, you, you can argue, well, this works for me, and uh, you, you can make all kinds of good arguments until you, 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 until I throw at you, all you're doing is picking a bottom. You cannot wiggle out of that. That's a fact. So I wait. Again, it just works for me. I want to see those buyers stepping in. When I see those buyers, all I want to do is tuck myself in beside them and just ride the ride with them. Let them, let them push everybody out of the way. I just want to tag myself along with them and ride the ride with them. That's it. So I always wait for that bullish candle. I also want to make sure there's a, a trend in this chart. Is there a trend here? Yeah, there we go. You know, can we put that trend in there? Look at that. Right here, right here, right here. We're back above the trend right now. I like that. I want to make sure that the price, the price, the, 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 the pattern is there. It's there. I want to make sure there's profitability upstairs. So, so you buy it here. Is that, is that enough profitability for you? 9%. That's plenty good for me. Plenty good. So, anyway. I, thanks, Mitch. I hope I answered your question there. Hope I did. Um, let's see here. Uh, and let's see here. So, I just, there it is, Bobby. Uh, huge cup and handle. Okay. I, I want to talk about that. Thanks, Bobby. So what, what Bobby's looking at is this right here, maybe, or maybe maybe right here. Maybe Bobby's looking at this, cup and handle. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. It really is. Being a short-term trader, I don't look at those long-term things like that so much. Don't get me wrong. I think that's nice, Bobby. I do. Because this adds to the this adds to the power of the chart, but that's not something I I honestly take in consideration. I take that in consideration if it's in the short term, but not necessarily the long term. Again, don't get me wrong. I think that's fantastic, and that adds that adds power to the chart. It might not add anything to my trade. It might not add anything to anyone else's trade um, at the moment, at the moment. So, uh, for instance, you've got a, a nice big cup and handle here. The reality is this thing can turn around and go down and start moving like this. And in the bigger picture, it's still going to be a cup and handle, but it'll eat your lunch on the way down here. So... It's not something I chase after, but I do notice it, and, and it gives me a little power in the chart. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, there, Malcolm. And, you know, I've become, I, I've become more and more like that, too. I trade one chart pattern, and uh, it's just price rallying up, coming back to the T-line. That's all the 3-8 strap is. Um, and trade the trend. Uh, that's it. Even when I trade the rounded bottom breakout, I still trade the entry uh, looking at that trap. I, that, that, folks, I got to tell you, that's, that's some bread and butter right there. That's bread and butter. Uh, let's see. Reggie, can you please explain your uh, box concept? Sure. That, you know, the box concept, there's no trick to that. Uh, there really isn't. Um, one day, a long time ago, one day I'm sitting here and looking at a chart and, you know, trying to do all this, okay, buy here and buy that, looking at intraday charts, okay, do this and do that. And I kept doing that and I kept, and, and at the time I used, I used this tool right there. That would be like, buy area or 
you know, a place that I'm going to look at an entry, right? Well, one day I step back and I'm looking at these charts and I'm thinking, why in the world are you doing all this work? Why in the world are you spending all this, all this time doing this stuff? When every single one of them, it was the same thing. If you have a bullish candle, just wrap it around the bullish candle and trade the inside day. Da-da! There you go. It was that easy. It took me years to make that simple. There is no secret to the buy box. That, that is, there is a zero secret about that. Um, I, I, first of all, I love inside days. And the reason I like inside days is I like bullish candles or multiple bullish candles. And then I like a rest. You get an inside day. Very simple. And then from there, as long as we can hold inside this candle, I'm going to stay bullish on this chart. So all I do is wrap wrap that around the candle. Now, what I will do is I won't use the bottom half in many cases, for instance, this case, because that goes way too low. And I usually almost always put the box above that candle just ever so slightly. That covers the breakout conversation. And the breakout is not that box. The breakout is that candle. So if I see price tapping on that candle's top, well, there we go. So again, it's the, 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 the buy box is just a way for me to draw my eyes to that area. That's all it is. The, and Reggie, please, let's make sure you've got that nailed down. That, that is something that I think is super basic, super easy, and extremely helpful. Extremely helpful for, a, for somebody looking at charts. Uh, let's see, C's asking, how would I handle Chewy? Uh, Chewy's a breakout. That's easy. That, that, and th this is another thing. Once I say this is easy, once we talk about this, as far as I'm concerned, this has been answered for all breakouts forever and ever. There, there is no give or take here. It's very, very simple. So we've got a breakout and now we're breaking out of a J-hook pattern. So we're going to put the line up here. We're going to paint this red, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it down because we're going to let it breathe a little bit. So just simply look at that chart. Where would you not like that chart? I'm going to go right there. Now, I'm using a combination of this candle, this candle, and this candle. This one, this one, and this one top of that body, we're almost at the open, and that's very close to the close. There you go. Let's put the buy box. Reggie, we're going to wrap it around that candle right there, just like that. This candle, this candle breaking out of this J-hook pattern tells me that this chart's going higher. And if I'm wrong, that's okay. I have a stop on it. So, I'm looking in here for an inside day, so let's give it an inside day. I just might buy it on that day. Maybe I don't buy it on this day, but I buy it on this day. I don't know. I can't, I can't make that call until that time happens. Now, I will tell you what I'll do is if I see, if I see a candle inside the buy box, and let's say we open up right here okay and if it starts coming up on the scanner a new day high and if i see another print a new day high another print new day if i see multiple prints i'm gonna buy that also another thing well yeah i'm just gonna buy that and what if the next day it does this oh well See, if I was Malcolm, well, okay, we're going to give it seven days. 
as long as it stays in that in that buy box there, we're all cool. There's my stop right there. I'm cool with that. So, like I said, this is just a simple breakout, and we have a little Jayhawk. This is one and done. This is there. There's no reason to overthink this. There's no reason to, to, you know, look at it inside out or upside down. That's a no-brainer trade right there. Absolute no-brainer. And by the way, thank you very much. I'm going to flag that. I wish I would have saw that today. That would have been on the watch list. I wish I would have saw that today. I would have bought that today. <laughs> Oops. Whoops. I take that back. Scratch that. I would not have bought that, and I would not have put that on the watch list. Earnings was today. So I would have no interest in this today because of the earnings, okay? So would not have gotten it. Anyway, nice, beautiful chart. Excellent chart. Uh, let's see, Jake, in terms of taking profits today, you took half a blank. Yes, off. Do you then adjust the original stop as well? I will if it goes up. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not, we don't want to leave the stop here if, if, now I don't think I adjusted it up today. If I did, I would have posted it. So right now I'm still living with this price. So if, with this stop, but, but the reality is Jake, if it did this, whoops, if it did this, what do you think I would do? Take my money. What's my number one goal? Take my money. What, what if it, yeah, what if it did, you know? So at tomorrow at some time, I'll move that stop up. But I'll bet you a $100 bill, I'll bet you a good steak dinner that I'm not holding this come Friday. I'll bet you a steak dinner on that. I'll bet you a steak dinner that if it moves up here tomorrow, that I'm out of it. I'll bet you the steak dinner if it does that. Uh, let's see, where are we? Zoom out even more. I don't think, not sure anyone's talking to me on that. Mitch, yes, Mitch, Bobby, Jake. Uh, what do you think of J, 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 M, I, A? Whoops. Uh, I think you've got a J hook setting up. I think you've got a very nice bullish in golf. I think you've got a beautiful... Uh, consolidation here. I like what that's doing. But we do have to take in consideration this top up here, don't we? I think we need to do that. So let's do this. Um, let me get my special little tool out. And I'm just going to wrap it around that candle and come down to that volume. That's not, that's not horrible volume. That compared to everything else, that's not horrible. So I might, I might consider that, but let's think about this. Let's think about this trade here, okay? Where do we think this chart can go? I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of all that. There we go. And let's go to a three, dart, three bar chart. I'm only going to three bar chart so I can see everything over here, everything over on the left. Let's put a line up right here, and let's put a line here. That's the top, okay? Now let's go back to the daily chart. So um, we have this, this candle in here. We're approaching our first line of, well, actually our first line of resistance is right here, right where we are right now, right where the high was today. But if we take this trade, what do we, let's say we take it tomorrow at somewhere near 34.68, and that's, you know, honestly, that's 19%. That could catch my interest just because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of um, percentage there. This is a beautiful setup, by the way. I love this. I'm just not sure that I'm feeling comfortable with that candle. Now, once it breaks out, once it breaks out, I would be very, I would be even more comfortable with this chart up here. But again, if I'm looking at this chart, if this chart is on the watch list and I see the scanner 
poking its nose up or poking me saying, hey, look at this chart move up. If I see that happening, I just might take that trade. But then again, remember what kind of trader I am. Remember what kind of trader I am, okay? So we move up. I'm going to be taking profits into strength. So we get up into this area, I just might be taking profits. Let's think about this. If we bought it today, for instance, say at 35.20, if it got up here, that's 14%. Is that enough money for you? And, and, and that's what you've got to ask. you. That's one of those things you have to ask yourself. Is there a path to profits here? Now, I think there is. But I also think there might, maybe, a little bit of a little bit of hesitation at this level. But that's okay. Are you willing to take that trade for 14%, 13-14%? You've got to be able to see that path. Now see with this chart here, you break out of all these highs, I see a huge path up here. I see a path to 100 bucks. And yet, and again, I want to—I I really want to re reiterate here. That is a beautiful looking chart. It really is. We just have to take that in consideration. This candle right here. Now, it was nothing more than a bearish candle and a gap down. That's it. That's all it was. Um, I don't even know that we can make. Well, there we go. You can look at a four-day chart, and that's a big bearish uh, belt hold. Just say I need to check my phone. I think maybe my wife tried. Oh, okay. So, but this this bullish engulf and everything on the right, I think, is absolutely gorgeous. Tonight's topic, profit target. I think uh, of a target like a dartboard. Uh, you don't have to hit the bull's bullseye to score uh, points to win. Scotty, well put. Very, very well put. Well put. I'm going to have to use that. I like that. Doll, can you look at LB? Absolutely. LB. Uh, LB, that's a nice bullish chart here. This was actually on my list, but it got cut. This is my list right here, and you can see LB. It got cut. Um, just I just like the others better. But then again, LB is on the list already. LB is on the list already. So I didn't have to put focus on it tonight or, yeah, in tonight's video. Uh, but a nice gap up. Look at that pullback. I, I think that is an excellent, excellent looking chart. So let's, let's work the numbers on that. I'm going to put a line up here just so we can be kind of clear where this top is right in here, right? So let's do this. We're going to we're going to put a buy area. Again, I'm going to wrap it around that candle. No secret there. I am going to put the stop right down there at that low because if it started moving below that low, that would be kind of not cool. There we go. If we opened up and started coming back down, that would actually could, could be forming something like an evening star. Yet today's candle would kind of throw the whole evening star out of it. But what if it did that? You can't tell me you'd like that. I wouldn't like it. Not at all. So I'm looking at this chart. I'm seeing resistance, tag, support, resistance, tag, uh, support, support. That looks like a little important line, doesn't it? So how about $39.95 as a stop? How about a buy box less than 4% in spread? Lots of upside move. Beautiful, beautiful chart. Plug was one of the trade ideas today. By the way, can somebody draw me a line down below, pretty please? Plug. Plug, plug, plug was on the uh, video tonight for uh, trade idea. Look at that beautiful J hook right there. Look how we broke out over this uh, candle right here. And we held, not by much, but by, by skin, but it did. I don't think I would like this below 26.65. That's a pretty big spread, 9% there between the top and the bottom. But hey, if you buy it up here, readjust the stock, right? I'm looking for 
push in the direction of 3560. That's a nice chart there too. Both those charts you're looking at, I think, are top notch. What is a new day high when it makes a new day high? <laughs> Sorry, Jake. <laughs> um, when it makes a new day high. <laughs> no, in other words, um, let's do, say whatever price that is, that's the high. When it when it makes a new high is when it moves up. Just take this candle. It will not, it, you cannot call it a new day. High. Well, if we're still in the middle of today, okay? If, if today is noontime, for instance, and this candle is right there, it cannot be a new day high till it pushes over $29.49. So if it pushes up to $29.50, it would be a new day high. Now tomorrow, the, the, the day becomes a new day. So if, if it opens here and it moves up, that's a new day high, a new day high, a new day high, a new day high. When it breaks out of that candle, that becomes a two-day high, two-day new day high. Okay. Thank you regarding earnings. You bet. You, you know, see... That's what experience does, and that's what routine. What a routine does, a, rut, a routine is. Uh, let me tell you guys a true story here. Okay, absolutely true, and and it's driving my wife and I absolutely bananas. Um, so, I've been not. I I haven't been doing the uh, trade ideas in the morning. I've been doing them, uh, putting them together the last hour of the day. And then I do the recording just immediately after the close. Or I what I no, I take that back. I, I close the room down just for a second, 20, 20 minutes or 15 minutes. I do the recording real fast, and then I bring the room back up before the market closes, and then I actually publish. I have to render it and publish the recording um, right after the market close. Now you're probably wondering what in the world am I talking about? And where am I going with, with this? What I'm talking about is a routine. I don't know for how many years I've been doing the same routine over and over and over with the recording. Okay. Well, here I've changed my routine. And do you know that not one single time since I've started it have I gotten it right? Not one single time have I gotten it right. Tonight, you guys all know I did the recording. Do you know what I had to do? Because I forgot to turn the microphone on. Do you know that after the market closed, I had to do another recording? I had to do this last night. And the problem is, I changed my routine. And I haven't found my routine yet. I haven't, I haven't found my, my, my comfort zone yet. I'm still looking for it. So it's all about a routine. And I know that it's going to work out. I just have to find my routine. And with stock trading, my routine, I look at the chart, I glance at earnings, you know, um, you, you'll see me constantly maybe go to a weekly chart or to a monthly chart. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for resistance on the left side over here, things like that. You, you, like, I'll just do that real quick and then I might go back. That's what I'm doing. It's just part of a routine. Um, I, you know, some people put out charts that are just, just flat ugly sometimes, and they look funky. I can just tell by the chart, that looks funky. What's wrong with it? Immediately what I do is this right here. I will, I will glance down at the volume right there. I will glance down at that volume. And if that volume is not good, then you'll see me do this. I'll take my mouse cursor and I'll just curse to the left. And I'll see what the average volume is day by day. And see, this is all over easy 10 million. Easy 10 million. But sometimes I'll see that it just, it's just part of a routine. And it's just part of getting comfortable with looking at charts. And believe me, I miss it sometimes. A lot of people will tell me, uh, earnings are at, earnings are at, big old, you know, they, they share this, and I, I think it's great. So it's just being comfortable with a routine. 
Um, maybe create a checklist. You th that, that's going to be very tedious uh, to do it. Uh, not only to create the... Well, I think it'd be kind of fun to actually create the checklist. Um, but actually following the checklist, I think, would be very tedious. But I think you only have to follow it for just a few days. And before you know it, you're going to be seeing everything in the chart that you've put on your checklist. So it's just part of the routine. Uh, you're on barbecue duty. Man, that sounds like a good deal. SPWR. Um, SPWR, I would have to say if this thing gets... You know, I'm going to have to go with over 2240. I like that chart. I like that a lot. I think it's doing pretty good now. I really do. There you go. Let's make it 2260 above that candle. Uh, that would give us follow through. So here's what I like about this. Uh, nice trend. I think we've got a very nice bottom. I think that's an excellent looking chart. Now what I would like to see, breakout and test. Chart pattern setup. That's what I would like to see. So I'm looking for a rally and a rest. Run, rally, run, breakout, whatever you want to call it, and a rest. But that is a nice chart. Thank you. Um, 3H trap on, yes, I think that JMIA. Now, let's talk about that for a second. A 3 8 trap doesn't mean that it's a beautiful, buyable chart. Uh, there's a lot of other things that go into it. Like, are you comfortable buying it under this 36, 35? Are you comfortable with that? Not, it, it, not every trap is a buy. That's important, okay? Not every trap. All righty, Gwyn's got to go. That's it. Gwyn's got to go, and Fred drew a line. That, that, that's got to be the end of the show, right? It's time to go uh, have something sweet now. I've got cookies. Animal crackers with the uh, uh, candy sugar stuff on them. <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks, everybody, for being here. I do appreciate it. Thanks for all the questions. I hope everybody... I, You know, out of every... Any and all, doesn't matter where you go, doesn't matter what webinars you go to, it doesn't matter what videos you listen to, it doesn't matter what books you look at, it doesn't matter what ebooks you look at, it doesn't matter who you talk to. If you're able to take away one tiny, 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 tiny little bit of information that makes sense to you, then it was well worth it. Over a little bit of time, over a little bit of time, all those little bits and pieces. It's like, it's it's like uh, uh, connecting the dots is what it is. I wonder if I could do this. I'll try this. You know, it, it's it's like connecting the dots. Um, so uh, we're gonna connect. We're we're gonna we're gonna connect some dots up here. <laughs> this is not gonna work out. I can see that already. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is not gonna work out. So just just connect. Let's just do that. <laughs> Just connect the dots. And, and over time, they will connect. And that's something about stock trading. You have to give it time. You truly, truly do. And the quicker you break some of those bad habits, then the quicker, the quicker you'll be much happier with your trading. Let me share. Let me share uh, a bad habit, I think. One is picking bottoms, okay? All right, I think that's a horrible bad habit. I truly do. The other bad habit is uh, going against the trend. And let's, let's, let's take a look at the market here, okay? There. And my market to me is the spy. That's pretty much my market. That's what I follow. Um, I have to admit here, I've followed that FNGU an awful lot lately. Um, that's my trend. So the market is trending up. I think a bad habit is trying to short. <laughs> I see people right now trying to short and I, I'm, I'm, I kid you not, I do not believe they're going to last in trading, but they are determined to short. And why I do not know. Well, maybe I do know because you make faster money. 
You do make faster money. Only when the short is with you. And when the market is trending up, that's no time to short. That, that is just not a good time to short. That is a horrible habit to get into. Um, and anyway, that, that's what I wanted to share there. So um, trade with the market. Trade with the market. All right, you guys. Everyone, thank you very, very much. Thanks for being here. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all tomorrow, okay? Be safe. Trade smart. Let's get through this troubling time. You guys take care. Good night.